Good morning and welcome to St. Luke Online Worship. Today we give thanks for the work that we are called to do in God's vineyard. And we also give thanks for the many animals that bless our lives in remembrance of Francis of Assisi. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, Forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs> So as part of today's worship service, we are going to give thanks 
and we are going to bless all of the animals in our lives. And we do this today because long ago, there was a man named Francis of Assisi, and he was a renewer of the church. And he lived a very simple life. He took a vow of poverty, and he lived in a way that was very gentle to the earth. And he was known for his love of nature and his love for all the animals. He's actually the one who started those kind of live nativity scenes um, where you bring in real animals and people to make the, the nativity scene around Christmas. Um, so we're, we can thank him for those. And animals are always a blessing in our lives, but even more so this past year, um, when we were unable to go many places or see many people, those of us who have pets in our homes were able to take comfort uh, from our cats and dogs, and maybe even your little goldfish provided some comfort for you. And if you don't have a pet, we actually don't have pets in our house, um, we still spent more time outdoors. And so those critters that live outside, the squirrels and the birds, and we really like uh, the family of bunnies that hang out in our yard, they provided um, some more joy for when we were outdoors. And I think to myself about the new outdoor worship services that we've been doing, how we've entered into this space that's different and we've been welcomed by nature around us and we've been able to join with all of creation in praising God. So today we give thanks um, and we remember all the animals in our lives, the ones that we have in our homes and the ones that we see in nature. And we are just thankful that us as humans are not alone in this world, that we are surrounded by the great diversity of creatures that God has made, big and small. What a gift. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for everything you have made, the birds of the sky, the fish in the sea, and the wonderful animals that fill the earth. Fill our hearts with love for all of creation and help us care for the earth you made. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wrenches into a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the product, the product at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. 
When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Another Sunday, another parable about a vineyard, another challenging text that asks us to think about the church and its work in the world. But it's good to have one another, to enter into these texts together. I mentioned in a recent midweek reflection all the work that Burton and I did to our house, getting it ready for whoever loves it next. Blessing our house through cleaning, decluttering, and organizing. I've been doing some of that here at St. Luke, too. Over the past few weeks, I've been cleaning my office and the education supply room. I've been doing it pretty slowly, I'm sure most people haven't noticed, for about 20 minutes a day. I sort and toss, organize and consolidate. Gina can verify this. She's gotten in on the fun too. Once you get started, it's kind of addicting. I'm not ready to pack yet. I'm not leaving for a while. And I don't want to leave before I actually leave. But I'm doing this slow work of cleaning, hoping that it will be a gift to who comes next. In that ministry room, there's a lot of treasure, but it's hidden in a lot of junk. So I'm hoping to leave it looking like a room full of treasure. As I'm cleaning and sorting, I've reflected on how I'm just one piece of St. Luke's story. One chapter, hopefully a good one, one that you'll think of with a smile, but just one chapter. St. Luke was here long before I was, and it will continue after I go. That's one way to think about the larger church, too. That each one of us is a steward, caring for what we've been given until the day we go to our heavenly home or until Jesus returns. Caring for the church, doing God's work the best we can while the church is entrusted to our care. In our gospel text, the vineyard owner cares for the land, sets it up just so, and then gives it to the, to the tenants to take care of. It's not their land, it's not their vineyard, the fruit is not their harvest, but this venture has been entrusted to them. They are the caretakers, meant to keep the vineyard season after season thriving. A well cared for vineyard can last hundreds and hundreds of years. These caretakers are just one chapter in what could be a long history of this vineyard. The tenants fail to produce fruit, or maybe they start to see the vineyard and its fruit as their own. Whatever the case, they become violent towards the messengers sent from the vineyard owner, and they even kill his son. When Jesus asks what the punishment will be when the landowner returns, those listening to the story guess violence. Surely the violent tenants will receive violence. But that's not the punishment. The punishment for being bad caretakers is that the vineyard will be put in someone else's care. A dangerous interpretation of this text is to assume that the tenants represent the people of Israel, rejecting God's prophets and then finally God's own son, so that the vineyard is given to followers of Jesus. Readings like that do violence to our Jewish siblings and they make us think that we're off the hook. This text is meant to challenge and convict us. The deeply troubling message of this parable is that the rejection of God's word comes from the caretakers, the leaders of the church. The land isn't the problem, the people aren't the problem. Everything has been provided for an abundant harvest. The rebellion comes from within. God's own people reject God's messengers, even God in the flesh. And it still happens today. There's a book by Jacqueline Bussey 
called Love Without Limits, Jesus' radical vision for love with no exceptions. And in the introduction, Bussy talks about how difficult it was to get her book published. See, the initial publisher, the one who even came up with the title, A Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions, and paid her to write this book. When the writing was completed, the publisher didn't like certain chapters. The publisher didn't want to talk about God's love for LGBTQ folks, or the chapter that included God's love for Muslim people. They would only publish the book with those chapters removed. And because they paid the advance for the book, if they tried to publish it elsewhere, she would have to pay back tens of thousands of dollars. A Christian publisher publishing a book on God's limitless love, tried to place limits on God's love, attempted to make this idea of limitless love more palatable by guessing which chapters would be acceptable to its readers. Bussy was speaking with a prophetic voice, and that voice was met with a hardened heart and even threats of silencing her voice by claiming ownership of the book she'd written. In the end, Bussy did get her book published with all of the chapters by going to a different publisher, New Caretakers. It was a missed opportunity for that first publisher, but God provided another way for the word to get out. I keep thinking that the activists working for racial equality today are the new messengers that God keeps sending because the first prophets for racial justice were rejected and even killed. How many prophetic voices do we need to hear before this country becomes a safe place for all people, where all people, regardless of skin color, have the same opportunity to thrive? So this parable challenges us with asking what prophets have we rejected? And when did we miss an opportunity to bear fruit? But there's also grace in this text. There's good news. And the hope for me is that the vineyard work, God's holy work, always finds a way to get done. For all the times we fail to listen, reject the prophet, or fail to see Jesus in the flesh, God keeps sending messengers. God keeps, the Holy Spirit keeps, inspiring new caretakers. God's work in the world needs to get done, and it will get done. It's just a question of if we allow ourselves to be a part of it. We don't want to miss out on being part of this vineyard work, on being part of the wonderful things that God is doing. We're invited to be co-creators shaping the world we live in to more closely resemble the kingdom of God. What an awesome invitation. The fruit of the kingdom is love. We are invited to live lives of love, to be vessels of God's love for all people. It's our duty and our joy. The time we live here on earth is our time as caretakers of the vineyard. Our lives on earth are short. We're just chapters of God's eternal story. And after our chapter is the next. The vineyard work continues from generation to generation. We can only hope that by God's grace, we've been faithful stewards and worthy caretakers, that we've left a legacy of love, that we've cared for the vineyard well, and the fruit is plentiful. Oh God, may we always labor in love, and may your harvest be abundant. Amen.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work, service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the table of all who are hungry. May we be inspired by your servants who cared deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, who we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant the world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. Kurt, Julie, Barbara, Alexander, Stephen, Chip, Nadine, Harry, Brenda, Pam, Mark, Dennis, Lori, Ron, Terry, Bill, Glenn, Rayanne, Fred, Hugh, Herb, Ethel, Neb, Stephanie, Charlotte, Sharon, Patty, Jean, Linda and her son Billy, Jim, Ron, Ken, Jennifer and Pete, Gloria, Joe, Lynn, Sarah. Pray for the deployed military, Andy, Chris, Derek, Patrick, Abigail. Pray for the homebound. Lynn, Lynn, Ruth, Dale. Pray for those with other concerns. Essential and health care workers. Ryan, Nicole, Caleb, Saditha, Teddy, Aaron, and the Chickambuso Project. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work. Those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is completed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
For our blessing of the animals, you are invited to go get those pets of yours and um, bring them into your worship space. Or for our little ones, um, especially if you don't have a pet, you're invited to go grab a stuffed animal that brings you joy and comfort. Let us pray. You who created them and called them good, bless again these creatures who come to us as a blessing, fashioned of fur or feather or fin, formed of flesh that breathes with your own breath, that you have made from sheer delight, that you have given in dazzling variety, Bless them who curl themselves around our hearts, who twine themselves through our days, who companion us in our labor, who call us to come and play. We especially thank you for the animals we name now. Bless them who will never be entirely tamed, and so remind us that you love what is wild, that you rejoice in what lives close to the earth, that your heart beats in the heart of these creatures you have entrusted to our care. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.